This is the end of the beginning. Welcome to today's show. Well, none of us believe in coincidences, and the whole theory about how the direct energy weapon in Maui seemed to have targeted pretty much everything except anything blue is starting to gain more traction because of things like what I'm about to show you involving FEMA. If you didn't see my previous video on it, the theory is that there was a lot of items, a lot of cars, a lot of homes with blue roofs, and of course the blue umbrellas that seemed untouched. Not even just untouched, they seemed perfectly fine. At least the umbrellas were and the homes with blue roofs were. And of course we saw blue containers that somehow were just sitting in the streets and there's the theory as well of blue shirts, a pile of blue shirts that somehow survived that were sitting out there. So there's all these theories about how the direct energy weapon can target specific colors. And of course, if the laser beam itself, the lens is blue, then it will not hit things that are blue. Kind of like this video clip that I shared in that video. Take a look. Laser weapon can be programmed to different wavelengths. <laughs> There was something blue they didn't want to burn. The blue car did not burn in flames. Same as the blue umbrella. So this theory is gaining traction. I did a video talking about it, just saying that it was out there for people that wanted to know about it. And now there's this. If you research FEMA's YouTube channel and other things that FEMA has put out there, other files, other documentations, other articles released from FEMA, there is this thing called Operation Blue Roof, which is run by FEMA and the U.S. Army. And what it is, is they come in and they put blue roofing, roofing on your home. It's a blue tarp in a sense, but it's also a flammable, it's flame proof. So we know that FEMA obviously was likely over there at Waikiki during all of this stuff on August 8th, like I covered yesterday. If you didn't see that video about the calling card, I highly recommend you check it out because again, the government's calling card is that they have these events, they have these meetings about the same thing that actually ends up happening at the same time. Drills are run in real time. So this notion of Operation Blue Roof has a lot of credibility if you start looking at some of these connections to the government and blue roofing and the fact that they were offering these blue roofs and these blue tarps to put on as temporary roofing for homes in the events of, you know, things actually occurring like hurricanes, et cetera. Well, why couldn't they come out there and put blue roofing on homes that they want to protect beforehand if they're using a direct energy weapon? That's not out of the realm of possibility. And of course, there's also this. This, obviously, laser beams and these types of direct, I don't like to call them laser beams, direct energy weapon. These things operate in wavelengths. At a blue light, okay, the wavelength is around 450 to 495 nanometers. If you convert nanometers, and you could just Google it yourself, wavelength for blue in Hertz, this comes up. Blue, wavelength, 450, frequency, 6.6. .6 six very interesting for anyone out there that was like well why would they choose the color blue isn't purple their color the color of royalty well that's a very interesting thing i'm sure that's a coincidence as well as we always see the symbology with numerology we see 33 always used we see 666 always used or 66 sometimes or 36 right we see this as 36 as in three sixes so again the wavelength for blue in nanometers is 450, and it, all you have to do if you think that I'm making this up as a screenshot here is put in wavelength for blue in hertz, and you get blue as 6.66 in frequency. You can't make some of this stuff up. Now, let's look at some of the stuff with FEMA. These are videos that FEMA has posted on YouTube. Again, how convenient about the U.S. Army working, obviously, with FEMA. They're one and the same but how they have this operation called Operation Blue, Blue Roof. And we were all talking about how it seemed weird from a lot of the aerial shots that a lot of homes with blue roofs had no damage done. How some of these articles were scrubbed off the internet. Whether you believe them or not, it's up to you. But a lot of articles out there that we're talking about, or at least one specific one that's been completely scrubbed, was one that said, why are celebrities painting their Maui properties the same weird shade of blue because a lot of the celebrities there who whose homes were conveniently untouched all conveniently had blue roofs on it now 
obviously we've seen what the mainstream media does and what these puppeteers of the Soros Foundation, just call them government puppeteers like Snoops or Snopes or Scum, whatever you want to call them. They put these articles out immediately debunking everything. And again, that gives things more credibility. When they bring attention to these things and they try to flip what people are talking about, to me, it's just like having blood on your hands. I mean, you might as well raise your hand and have guilty tattooed on your forehead. They bring attention to truth and they try to do that so that when people search for these topics, those will be the first things that they see. And we know statistics and data and just common sense shows you know, that a lot of people, when they do a Google search, they automatically click the first couple articles that they see. They don't go to page 10, et cetera, et cetera. And they want those to be the articles that people see so that they don't get their brain actually functioning and asking questions, immediately they have these articles in place about, oh, it's a debunked already, the blue Maui, is no, there's no credibility to it. Their brain will just automatically shut off anything that they hear about these quote-unquote conspiracy theories, which have a lot of truth behind them. But let's take a look at some of the videos that FEMA has posted about Operation Blue Roof. Operation Blue Roof and the FEMA self-help program, while similar, use two different materials. Both programs help reduce further rain damage to homes and provide temporary protection for the roofs of residential structures damaged during severe weather. The sheeting for Operation Blue Roof are installed by a contractor overseen by the Corps of Engineers according to certain specifications. The material is a rolled polyurethane sheeting with fiber reinforcement. It's 10 millimeters thick and measures 20 feet by 100 feet. It's used for major impacts to roofs. The sheeting is 100% waterproof. It is also tear resistant, UV resistant, and fire retardant. The FEMA self-help tarps are installed by the homeowner. The material is thinner and not as resilient as the plastic sheeting. It typically measures 20 feet by 25 feet with grommets to allow for a tie-down solution. These blue tarps are used for minor roof repairs and are more of a patch solution. To sign up for the program, you can call 888 roof blue you can go to blue roof.us or you can go to one of our many sign up locations i knew i needed my roof protected governor had a news conference and he mentioned something about the corps of engineers in the blue roof program and i got online and i just registered as soon as i could oh i was happy it was quick it didn't take long for them to respond the Corps of Engineers on behalf of FEMA has a temporary roofing mission and what this does is it enables a homeowner to return from a shelter or a hotel, wherever they've evacuated to, return home uh, if at all possible. This blue material is not the tarp that you see on other homes right now. It's a pretty thick membrane, 0.4 millimeter membrane, that is very durable. You cannot keep a Corps of Engineers employee away right now. They want to be part of this, whether they're doing blue roof, or they're installing generators, or they're doing debris removal, or they're advising the, the governor's office. They are very excited to be a part of this. I am excited. It relieves me to know that I don't have to worry about water damage. Uh, behind me, we're uh, installing a, a temporary fabric roof on a home that was damaged by the hurricane. This is a program that's uh, run by the Army Corps of Engineers for FEMA as a federal partner. Uh, the intent is to make the home livable for the occupants after a storm. Uh, it involves taking uh, blue plastic sheeting, uh, putting it over the damaged portions of the roof. We nail it down with wood battens to secure it nice and tight so it won't blow off from the wind. And that, uh, again, it keeps the house uh, watertight to avoid future damage. Uh, Laura, we had some people come out and they patched our roof. So you can see over there, it wasn't done correctly, it caused more water damage inside. And um, then for this one, for Delta, we actually heard of the Blue Roof program, filled out the application, and got a call a few days later, and they were here getting the job done. We have damages inside and we're um, not able to stay here due to the damages and we're getting a temporary roof from the Blue Roof program and it'll probably be December before we get a roof because everybody needs a new roof. We appreciate all the volunteers, all the donations made to the area and the Army Corps 
putting on all the blue roofs. It's amazing. 10,000 roofs. Insane. <laughs> So it's very interesting that they actually have an operation called Blue Roof because everybody was talking about afterwards, looking at the aerial shots again of all of these things that were blue. And, you know, it started with the trees, right? We all saw the overhead shots of all these trees that were untouched. We saw the same thing in California, right? So we all obviously knew in California that it was a direct energy weapon. It couldn't have been more obvious. And we all look at this and we go, okay, this is a direct energy weapon. There aren't wildfires in Maui anyway let alone ones that don't hit trees. And then, of course, they came out with all these other theories about electrical cords and, you know, all this other nonsense that they throw out there. But people were noticing that it was scorched earth, that things were melted. We saw metal melted to the ground, yet we saw blue umbrellas surrounded by it. It wasn't like the blue umbrellas were hundreds of miles away. It was right in the dead middle of Lahaina where things were getting scorched, that they were untouched. Cars that were blue untouched, homes with blue roofs untouched. So, of course, there's credibility to the theory because you all one has to do is use your own eyes. I tell people that all the time. Just use your own eyes. When they tell you something, use your own eyes to see these things for yourself. Don't listen to what they say without actually looking into things and use your own eyes and use your own brain and connect the dots. Most people don't. They just believe what they hear from the media because they look at them as their credible source for information because they can't critically think. They can't critically think because they're distracted. They're on their technology getting force-fed misinformation 24-7 from our government. And of course, the chemicals and the chem trailing and the chemicals in the food and the fluoride in the water have dumb ev dumbed everybody down to an unbelievable degree where we're actually at a point where we can't. We debate if men can have babies or not. That's how insane this is all getting. So the fact that after all that, seeing all that stuff, seeing articles about celebrities painting their homes blue, their roofs blue, the fact that FEMA has this fl flame tarred roofing and they pick the color blue and FEMA can roll in and put these blue roof tarps on top, on top of homes and they, they say, well, it's temporary. We'll temporary, we'll put these on top of your home. So why wouldn't somebody think that FEMA would do this ahead of the storms? Obviously, FEMA's not going to come out and say, well, before the storms, we're going to cover everybody's homes blue, their roofs blue. Right. But they have all of these blue tarps, right? All of our tax money, of course, all sitting on standby. Right. Do you think conveniently that all these celebrities just decided they wanted to paint their roofs blue? Hmm? They just love the color blue. I mean, it looks strange, does it not? It looks very just not normal to have these blue roofs. And the fact that they have these tarps sitting on standby, I don't believe is a coincidence. And again, you saw earlier in the video, I showed this in the previous video that I did as well, how they can target specific colors based on wavelength. Right? It's a real thing. It's a laser beam, right? How much predictive programming with lasers? Whether it's, you know, things like Austin Powers with the laser beam, giant freaking laser beam, right? To melt, you know, places, destroy the earth, et cetera, et cetera. But this whole notion in general of laser beams, people think is this fictional thing because they've constantly showed us this, right? Superman with lasers from his eyes, Cyclops with lasers, all these superheroes using laser beams. Okay, what do you think? Somebody just wrote this. In a, you know, in their basement, they're like, how about this? I got this whole idea about a beam coming out of somebody's eyes or a beam in general. And, you know, oh, yeah. And then every single movie just copies that theme, just like with the alien stuff. This is all predictive program, all stuff that they show us ahead of time. And again, you look at the wavelength thing with the color blue. Why the color blue? Right. Why not purple? Why not? I've seen people. Why not orange? Orange is 33. Why not that? Well, when you look at the wavelengths and the frequency then of the color blue being 666, I mean, that could give you a direct answer right there. There are no coincidences in this world. That's something that people need to realize. Nothing is a coincidence. This stuff is done by design and it's becoming so obvious at this point. And the fact that they know that they can get away with this, they know they can get away with having these meetings, just like with the schools, right? They have these drills. Oh, they, this happened at this school. And you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, right? That's what the public at least says. We all know immediately what it is. And then you, all you got to do is look into it, right? And, and then there's news reports. I've covered this all the time. I covered over on the website, uprisingrevival.com. All these events that happen because you can't cover them here on YouTube. And what do we always see ahead of time? Oh, did you know one month ago they did an active drill there with real police officers and the kids all, so the kids would know exactly what to do? And the police would have a whole map out of the school and know where to go and know how to act it out. I mean, know what to do when it actually goes live. 
How convenient. It's like a dress rehearsal, right? Exactly. A dress rehearsal. Event 201, a dress rehearsal. Right? This is what I was talking about yesterday in the calling card video. That's their calling card. Dress rehearsals, having meetings about these events ahead of time. And so ridiculous at this point. I mean, you thought the 11th of September was ridiculous. This is just right up there with the fact that on the 11th of September, they believed that it wasn't actually a real thing because they were saying, well, we're running an actual drill, a simulation at the same time of this event actually occurring as it occurred. And people are like, oh, well, that's a crazy coincidence, but there can't be anything behind it because our government would never do that to us, right? And at the same time in Maui, conveniently, like I said yesterday, all of these emergency groups and emergency, you know, everybody was over in Waikiki having a meeting about this actual thing occurring in Maui, which hasn't occurred before. How convenient, it happened on the same day. And then what happened? Oh, they didn't leave that meeting to go help out. In fact, they didn't even put off the uh, sound alarms, the warning alarms in the town because they were busy at a meeting talking about the event actually happening while it's happening instead of doing something about it. That's how obvious and in our faces this stuff is. That they can get away with this stuff is beyond comprehension at this point. That people don't see it. This is when you start going, if you don't see it now, if these people can't see it, then they're never going to see it, right? And that doesn't mean that I'm going to give up doing this because I feel like I have a unique way of getting into, pe- you know, getting to people, to reaching people, to just snapping them out of it. I've always been able to just, you know, if you want me to get into deep detail, I'll get into deep detail. If you want me to just talk street talk, you know, or just talk like I'm talking on the phone to you and just saying, hey, I mean, come on, let's be real here and just be straight up normal, like one-on-one without confusing you with deep language or terms that they don't understand. I could pull people out. Okay. But we're getting to a point where if they're listening to stuff like this and they can't actually see stuff when they're like, oh yeah, well that's a quince. Oh, that's a quince. That's a coincidence that they have these drills. They have these events, like event two, all these things they have ahead of time. And then these things actually happen. And they're just like, oh, you know, they actually, well, it's a good thing they had these meetings. So they, they, they figured it was coming, you know? All right. So in Maui, when we've never had this happen before, right? We've never had this happen before, and we've never had a catastrophe like this. They're even admitting that it's one of the worst, quote-unquote, wildfires in the history of the United States of America. They actually, on that specific day, all the days, forget the fact that they're actually having a meeting. That's like having a meeting about a blizzard hitting Florida or, you know, hitting uh, Tampa, Florida, right? They're going to have a meeting, or or, uh, let's just say Death Valley, because that would be, I mean, that's completely 100% unrealistic, right? That's like in Nevada, in Death Valley, Whatever government group runs Death Valley, them saying, hey, we're having a meeting on December 21st to talk about blizzard conditions and what we could do to combat climate blizzard conditions. And people are just like, what? Okay. And then on December 21st, while they're all meeting together, a massive blizzard hits. And instead of going to help the people out whose homes are getting covered and still aren't prepared because their homes aren't prepared for that, they stay at the meeting on top of it saying, well, we're meeting about this, this thing that's never happened here before. Don't be suspicious of us, right? That's what it's like. So in Maui, they're all meeting for an event that doesn't happen normally in Maui. The wildfires are not normal, okay? Not normal in Lahaina, especially. In that area, it's not normal for boats to catch fire from a wildfire. But, you know, yeah, okay. We're supposed to believe that they just coincidentally on that day were meeting there with government officials of FEMA, et cetera, et cetera, huh? So we can look at the blue tarp theory and we can say, well, ahead of time, FEMA gave out blue tarps. Apparently they could have very easily can, right? To people on the end. Think of it from that perspective. People are like, well, you know, they put new roofing on, Oprah did, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's look at it from this perspective. Because people just go, well, it's just the rich and it's this and that. There's many people out there who are part of this that you've never heard of. It's not just celebrities and politicians. There's people in your own town. So you'd say, well, how would they know? Well, when you're a member of secret societies, you know this stuff. Now, it doesn't mean every Freemason knows, obviously. There's low-level Freemasons. They don't know stuff. That's why when you go through secret societies, you learn more as you go, right? They make you aware of more. Oh, you know, and then they eventually obviously find out Lucifer is, is the god that they worship, but you get actual information. So a 30-degree or 33rd-degree Mason is not going to know this. Excuse me, a third-degree Freemason is not going to know the same thing as a 33rd-degree, Right? So if they have inside information, they're like, hey, this is what they're going to do, right? Because somebody will tell them when they network with other lodges and other people who are 33rd degree masons, they obviously have connections way, way up. And then they say, hey, there's going to be a wildfire in Maui, okay? Oh, crap. Oh, I have property in Maui. What if they're going to burn my house down in Lahaina? Well, they're going to use the blue, the, the, the blue beam. So 
or telling people ahead of time, you know, you'd want to put blue tarping on your home. That way the weapon will not hit there. Why is that out of the realm of possibility? It's not because they're not going to burn their own people's properties to the ground. So what would they do? They'd say, oh, okay. And then, you know, obviously don't tell anyone and you just call into FEMA or, you know, you do this or that and you re-roof your home with this, with this temporary roofing. And then when everything's over, you remove it and no one will be suspicious because I have no idea what you're even talking about. And you could just tell them that you put this temporary roofing up because you had problems with your roof and nobody will question it at all. Why is that out of the realm of possibility? It shouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. When it's available via our tax money that FEMA will do this for people, all you got to do is register. So in other words, some Mason, I mean, because obviously there's people in Lahaina whose houses didn't get fried and people whose did. The majority got fried, right? But we can look at it and we can say, well, obviously there's the ability that these people have this information because they plan these things out ahead of time. And that's what predictive programming is. They show us ahead of time. These people know ahead of time that this is all orchestrated and plotted and planned. And then they pretend like it just naturally organically happens. And then they completely go, oh, yeah, we were just over at a meeting there talking about this thing happening. That's never happened before in Maui, but don't be suspicious. Oh, yeah, our government doesn't seem to care. They're sending you $700 and they're sending $7 trillion to Ukraine. Don't worry about it. Oh, and then the president shows up and he starts talking about his kitchen fire that he had 40 years ago instead of caring or being sympathetic to the people whose lives have been torched. And nobody's suspicious that the government had their hand. Nobody's going, uh, it's pretty, you know, it's very obvious the government has their hand in this. And then conveniently, what happened a week later? California got hit with what? A hurricane. A hurricane flooded out certain towns specifically, right? But now it ended up as bad as they thought. Then what happened? Oh, now Florida's getting hit with one. Oh, what's going on in Louisiana? They're getting torched. And people are just like, well, it's the climate. It's climate change. And they just go about their day, not suspicious. And that's why this is their perfect plan that they've had in place. This is why they were talking about global cooling in the 70s. They knew what they were going to do then, switch to global warming, right? Now it's just climate change that they could do weather all year round. And nobody will question it. And they've beaten things into your head like you can't control the weather when we know for a fact they can control the weather. We know that's what harp's there for. We know that's what CERN's there for. We know that they've done these things. We know what cloud seeding's there for, right? And these imbeciles just go, oh, yeah, you know, because they can't wrap their head around it. Because the only thing they can wrap their head around is, you know, what their favorite celebrities are wearing today or who they're dating or who's got a new music video. Then they go over in their comment section and they drool over them. They're like, oh, this really resonates with me. And they act like they know this. They're living, in, they're living in an alternate reality. They're not even living in reality. They are so dumbed down. And so, you know, they, they sit there, they puff themselves up. They talk to these celebrities on their social media accounts as if the celebrities are listening. And that's the world that they're living in. That's the, that's the reality that they're in. They're so clueless and tone deaf and just out of their minds insane that they can't grasp What's actually happening? We've never seen the government use weaponized weather like this. We know they've used it before. We know they've used these tornado attacks in the Midwest that have absolutely been devastating and insane, though, right? No one's like, oh, there's 40 tornadoes hitting at once. They're just like, oh, yeah, the climate change. And that's where the government has created this, in addition to the fact that it's going to enslave us after the fact. So it's going to work perfectly for them as long as people continue to ignore these things and remain completely stupid. Prayers for everybody in Maui again. I know I've been covering the topic a bunch because it's a very important topic. I mean, I feel like covering this is the same as covering what happened on the 11th of September, which people covered for a decade after. I'm not going to cover this every single day, but I mean, when you're talking about the government killing off thousands of people, 2,000 missing kids like I covered, okay? Scorched earth, the government ignoring it. And people are just, you know, they're just, because it's not, you know, if they told you that it was Putin, it would be different, right? I mean, the mainstream media every single day, all the people get riled up and then they, you know, I'm sure there'll be something they'll blame on Putin soon. So the Democrats, because they consider Republicans Putin supporters in this crazy psyop they have going on with the left-right paradigm. So they'll get the left to go after the right because of that. But in this case, it's just getting completely ignored by people for the most part. Prayers to everybody there. I thank everyone for being here. Please subscribe to my backup channels if you haven't yet. I'm very close to getting one approved. So I need everybody over there in the event I get a strike on any of these videos, I won't be able to upload for two weeks. One more strike is two weeks. Two more strikes is permanent deletion, so you'll lose touch with me. So definitely do that. And if you haven't joined Uprising Revival yet, please do so. It's $2.99 a month. I added Apple Pay over there for anybody. I'm trying to add PayPal. Uh, I just I had a PayPal account years ago, and they canceled the account because of the stuff that I talk about. So I haven't been able to get one because, well, I, you know, you got to give information to get it, so I don't really know how to get around it. But... I'm working on that, but please consider joining the website. Again, it's troll-free. 
It's the price of a bottle of water for a month. It's not $2.99 a day, it's per month. So it's three bucks. I mean, bag of chips is like six bucks these days. So you get a lot of uh, great information. You also get exclusive content, such as what happened in Jacksonville I just covered, and I have a lot of stuff about the outbreak. There's a lot of things people need to know about, about what's coming. And of course, the permanent deletion of a lot of people that's coming uh, in regards to uh, going and lining up for their next round. So that's available over on the website. And again, you can go over there and click on free videos and just put your email address in. That way you'll get email updates, email blasts, and you'll be able to find my content. Many of you have commented so many times that you've lost contact with me. You've tried to find me. Where am I? I thought you were gone. I'm glad to see you're back. I've never been gone. So I've been back. It's just a matter of making sure you do those little things so that you could stay in touch with me and my content. I hope you'll do that now. I thank you guys for being here again. God bless all of you and your families.